Welcome to Servo N Training. My name is Jamie, a respiratory therapist at Gettinga. Remember, not all options seen here might be available on your Servo N. The screen can be moved and adjusted for each bedside, meaning there's no front, back, or side. Simply turn the screen. There's also an arm which allows it to be moved out and forward and turned. You can also tilt the screen front and back. Your inspiratory outlet is located here. Your expiratory inlet is located here. To hook up Aerogen technology, plug it into the Aerogen outlet located here. Here at the top is your Y sensor rack. The two bottom are your batteries. You may add modules as desired, for instance, CO2 and EDI capabilities. To get started, open the door, plug in your power cord, your air hose, and your O2 hose. To turn the ventilator on, pull down and push over on your toggle switch. Before starting the ventilator, you must first do the pre-use check. It will be prompted on the screen and select yes. First, you must attach the test tube in between the inspiratory outlet and the expiratory inlet. Then press OK, acknowledging. During the battery switch test, you'll need to unplug the ventilator and then plug it back in. Unblock the circuit and select OK. Now that the circuit test and the pre-use check are done, we can start ventilation. The servo N has two flow sensors, the internal flow sensor plus the proximal flow sensor. The proximal flow sensor is not required for tidal volumes above five. For tidal volumes less than five, it is recommended to use it to ensure accurate volumes and trigger sensitivity. Plug in the module into the side. Attach the cable and the flow sensor to the cable. You will then be directed by on-screen tutorials as this needs to be done before using. Block the Y and press calibrate. Touch OK and then you're ready to start. Attach your flow sensor to your circuit. On the screen, you'll notice that there is patient type offering neonatal and pediatric, ventilation type, including non-invasive and invasive. Under the modes tile, you will see an array of modes offered, including control modes, SIMV, auto modes, as well as spontaneous modes. On-screen tutorials are built in if you touch and hold, telling you about that mode of ventilation. Start by entering the baby's weight. Touch the screen and touch weight and put in their weight in grams. First, we'll start with the ventilation mode. Touching our tile, we'll select PRVC. When you select your tidal volume, due to the fact that we put in the baby's weight, it will now show you your total tidal volume and how many mils per kilo it is for protected ventilation. As you adjust, it will also adjust for you. To start ventilation, press start. You'll notice on the screen, your mode is located up here, your quick access settings at the bottom, and your patient measured values are on the right with your menu tiles being located on the left. To make a quick setting change, select your setting and adjust. You'll notice when you get outside the default range, it will turn yellow, alerting you. If you'd like to continue, press the plus sign and continue or go back to where you were. There are three types of alarms, 
Red is high priority, yellow, medium, and blue, a low priority. As you can see over here, the low minute ventilation is alarming here. You can make the adjustment on the screen and hit your check mark to confirm. Same thing with the medium priority. At the top, if you touch, an explanation of the alarm as well as basic troubleshooting advice will be displayed. To adjust, do the same thing and hit your check mark to accept. All of your alarms are located underneath your alarm tile on the side. You can see at the top anything that is an upper alarm limit and anything is a lower alarm limit. Your white in arrows indicate what your patient's currently doing. At the bottom is an auto set feature. If you touch it, it will automatically adjust your alarms based on what your patient is doing. You can also silence some audible alarms. For instance, here you see the bell at the bottom indicating you can silence the audible. Touch it to silence and accept. To see your patient triggering the vent, it is indicated at the top with the lungs flashing. You will see a white mark on your flow scaler if it's set with a flow trigger. In order to adjust that to a pressure trigger, simply click on your mode and select trigger. You'll notice a built-in tutorial is down at the bottom, currently with a flow trigger. If we move to the side, you will now notice a pressure trigger indicated here. If we accept this, you will notice my white now moves up to my pressure scaler. We entered the baby's weight at the very beginning, but you can also do it while ventilating as the baby's weight fluctuates. Do this by touching the same spot and adjusting your weight. As you do this, the vent will also calculate breath by breath, mils per kilo, and be trended in your trends as well. You'll also note next to your volumes, you will have an S symbol indicating that the tubing compensation is there and that you're delivering accurate volumes. Leak compensation is available in neonatal and invasive ventilation on the servo end. It's indicated over here with the lock on your volumes. You will also see the leakage calculated at the bottom. Remember, the volumes that you're seeing are the corrected volumes. Also, when you look at your alarms, you will notice at the bottom, it will say leakage alarms. You can turn off the audible for this simply by pressing the audible and hitting yes and accept. You can also do an oxygen boost located at the bottom. Touch and hold till the blue bar goes across. It will deliver a minute's worth of that O2 and silence your alarms for a minute. If you'd like to stop, hit your red X and it will cancel that and your alarms. You can also adjust the amount of oxygen you're giving to your baby. Do this by selecting your maneuvers tile and going to your O2 boost level. You'll see that you can adjust the increment. So when set at 10, you'll notice this is set at 10 above your set FiO2. As you adjust your oxygen, you'll notice your O2 boost will also change. Also located underneath your maneuvers tile is your manual breath. Select your maneuvers and manual breath. Every time you touch it, it will deliver your set settings to the patient, touching and delivering a breath. Also located underneath this tile are your inspiratory and expiratory holds. Select static measurements and inspiratory hold. When you touch, it is active, and you can also do an expiratory hold. When it beeps, it is active. Aerogen is built into every single ventilator and is accessed underneath your nebulization tab. Once you select it, you will then plug in your Aerogen 
located on the side of the vent. You will see that there is an intermittent or continuous. There you can choose which one you would like. You can do anywhere from 5 to 30 minutes. Hitting accept, you will then see your nebulization started at the top. The trends and logs are located in the menu screen. Select trends and logs. At the top will be your trends. You can look anywhere from an hour up to 72 hours of time by selecting on the side. You'll notice your trended values. Wherever your cursor is, those are your numbers. Gray hash marks at the top mean an event occurred. You can touch them and it will list all events in that minute. Simply scroll through to see different things that are trended. If you'd like to reorganize those, select Organize Trends. You can simply touch and drop in order to move things. As you get out of it, they will then be rearranged. Also underneath this tile are your logs. When you select your logs, your second one, everything that's happened to the vent will be listed. If you wanted to see how much O2 was delivered, you could put in your filter and type in O2 and filter. This will then bring up anything that is oxygen related. You can also change the view on the screen. This is done by the view tile on the left. Here is the advanced view with two columns of information. Advanced measure values are beneath your green arrow. At the bottom, select views. The first one is your basic view, located with just one column of information and your advanced measured values behind that. Also is your distance view, which shows five basic informational values, plus your pressure and flow and volume waveforms. You can also see your loops on your loops view. There's a family screen, which minimizes the amount of information, but still maintains your setting values and your basic measured parameters. The bubbles mean ventilation is occurring and will still alarm. In order to get out of this screen, simply touch and it will go back to your previous screen. There are two places that you can change your settings. First, by touching your mode and seeing the screen. Certain settings will have tutorials built into them showing you and telling you what you are adjusting before you adjust it. There's also an eye indicating information is behind it telling you about that setting. In order to, to accept, press your green check mark. You can confirm here. You can also quick access them at the bottom of the screen by touching your setting, making your adjustment, and touching your green arrow. If you would like to change your mode, along the tile on the left, you would touch modes. Here you would see any mode that you could change to. You'll note on pressure control is an arrow. That means that this was the previous mode used. At the bottom is a time and date stamp letting you know when it was changed. If you'd like to go back to those settings, you can touch your mode and accept the settings that you were on previously. At the bottom, you'll notice there's high flow therapy. You can access it without having to go into standby. Simply touch high flow therapy. Put in your settings. Note at the bottom, when you hit continuous, ventilation will stop in order to start high flow therapy. The upper bar will also turn green, indicating high flow. It is possible to lock the screen for example, if you're cleaning or on transport. At the very bottom, touch lock screen and then hit continue. This will lock the screen so that no settings can be adjusted. In order to unlock it, simply touch your unlock, touch and hold till the blue bar goes across. You can add servo compass to the other screens 
by touching and holding on your scaler. In the bottom, simply check servo compass. This is also where you can fill in your scalers, and you'll note the changes have occurred. If you'd like to disconnect the baby for a brief moment, select the disconnect tile. Here, it will pre-oxygenate your baby for up to two minutes once you accept. You can then disconnect your patient and ventilation will pause. Once you reconnect, ventilation will resume and post-oxygenate the baby. Remember, this is not to be used with closed suction. To stop ventilation, touch standby, then touch and hold stop ventilation until your blue bar goes across. If you'd like to go into non-invasive, simply touch ventilation type and non-invasive. You'll note that when you start ventilation in non-invasive, the upper bar will turn yellow, letting you know that you are in non-invasive. Thank you for watching the Servo N training. For additional information, go to our website, gettinga.com. <laughs>